God is good and all the time. My name is Sister Nema from Missionary Sister Servant of the Word. God is good all the time. My name is Sister Patricia, Missionary Servants of the Word. Today is another time whereby we would continue the previous topic, chapter 5, the judges and the strength of Samson. Whereby to talk about what we learned last time is that the people of Israel conquered the promised land with a great effort and with the help of God. Whereby this one shows us that God does not substitute man's effort, nor can man live without God. The another part is that God himself does not want his people to be drawn away or else far from his love, but he always helps us to become conscious of what makes us to go far away from him, maybe our bad behaviors and so forth, but he's ready to welcome us to return back to him. Again, we saw what used to unite the people of Israel was the faith in one God. That is the one true God. Today, we will continue to see about the judges. And before we begin, I invite you, we make a prayer using Psalm 135. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom, kingdom come, your will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. I know that the Lord is glad. Our Lord is glad than all gods. Whatever the Lord wishes, he does in heaven and on earth, in the seas and in all the depths. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For the, today, in order to continue, we listen from the book of Judges, chapter 2, verse 18. Whenever the Lord lays up judges, for them he would be with the judge and save them from the power of their enemies. As long as the judge lived, it was thus the Lord took pity on their distressful cries of affliction under their oppressors. The word of God. A brief meditation is that God was so merciful with the Israelites and so he sought to liberate them from the oppression of their enemies by sending them a brave men and women called the judges. In the Bible, we will see that we have, after the death of Joshua, 15 judges. And one of them is the most famous one, known as Samson, whom God had granted an exceptional strength. To continue learning more about the judges, Let's listen from the book of Judges, chapter 4, verse 4 to 7. At this time, the prophet Deborah, wife of Lepidus, was judging Israel. She used it to sit under Deborah's palm tree, situated between Lama and Bethel, in the mountain region of Ephraim. And there the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sat and summoned Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kedash of Naphtali. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, commands. She said to him, Go march on mountain Tabo and take with you 10,000 Naphtaliats and the, the blue nets. I will lead Sisera the general of Jabin's army, 
out to you at the word question, together with his chariots and troops, and I will deliver them into your power. The word of God. As we have heard from the text is that under the rule of Jabin, king of the Canaanites, the Israelites cried out to the Lord for his help. During that time, Deborah, a courageous prophetess who served as judge in Israel, summoned a man named Barak to lead the army and fight against the Canaanites. This one, we can have an example from our today's life, whereby we can see that we have women in the families, whereby some of them, they are capable to lead their families. The same way we can see, Deborah was ready to lead an army strongly, but not alone, with the help of the Lord. Again, for us as women to lead our families, we should have the opportunity always to ask the help from the Lord. And also, we are invited to question ourselves. Are we in the same capacity, like the prophetess Deborah, to lead our families in a in good manner? Sometimes we fail, maybe due to our weakness, maybe due to lack of fulfilling our responsibilities and so forth. That is in order to help each one to grow in faith and in the normal way of life. The next one is Judges chapter 4 verse 8 to 16, of which we will do as homework. And another one is Judges 6 verse 11 to 16, and Judges 7 verse 14 to 22. Then we will read from the book of Judges, chapter 14, verse 20, in order to listen about the one of the saints who was so great, known as Samson, how he lived his life. And Samson's wife was married to the one who had been best man at his wedding. The word of God. As we have heard, Samson is one of the great judges in the Bible, who had an exceptional strength from God. He had the mission to liberate the Israelites from the yoke of the Philistines, whereby in one occasion he had to fight and provoke the Philistines. Samson did against the, his, the traditions of his culture. He was there heading up to marry a Philistine girl. And so when it was the time for marriage, the best man took his wife. To continue, let's see what happened after the woman was taken by the best man. From Judges chapter 15, verse 4 to 5. So Samson left and caught three hundred folks, turning them tail to Tail, he tied between each pairs of tails one of the torches he had at hand. He then kindled the torches and set the fox loose in the standing grain of the Philistines, thus burning both the shocks in the standing grain and the vineyards and oliver or cards as well. The word of God. In this text, we can see after it, all that had happened above there with Samson, Samson now has planned to revenge to the Philistines. So he has fixed 300 foxes with torches of fire to them and then burnt everything for the Philistines. Let's continue and see what happened after he did the same. Judges 15, 11 to 12. 3,000 men of Judah went down to the cavern in the cliff of a town and said to Samson, Do you know, know that the Christians are our rulers? Why then have you done this to us? He answered them, As they have done to me, so have I done to them. They said to him, 
We have come to take you prison, to deliver you over to the Philistines. Samson said to them, Swear to me that you will not kill me yourselves. The word of God. Afterwards, we can see Samson hid himself in a cave, but the Philistines were looking for him. In this time, his action of hiding himself led to killing of 3,000 men, of which these people, they were innocent. The fault was for Samson himself. What about in our today's life, my dear listener? Many times we make the same mistakes and instead of refilling ourselves, we be there to hide ourselves and making others to serve. To continue, let us listen from Judges chapter 15, verse 13 to 15. No, they replied, we will certainly not kill you but will only bind you and deliver you over to them. So they bound him with two new ropes and brought him up from the cliff. When he reached lay and the Christian came shouting to meet him, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. The ropes around his arms became as a flax that is consumed by fire and his bones melted away from his hands. Near him was the fresh jawbone of an ass. He lashed out, grasped it, and with it killed a thousand men. The word of God. Again, in this text, we can see that Samson, again, he has led to killings of people by using a fresh dagger's jawbone, whereby... He was strengthened by the Lord, by his spirit, and he has used the same strength to do not good to his fellow persons. What about for us? We have this strength from the Holy Spirit. What do we do, my dear listener, to our fellow Christians with the strength the Lord has given hand to us? Himself, we can say, is doing what is not right. What about us? Maybe I and you, we have the strength from the Lord. But instead of using the strength to help others grow in faith or else live better, we diminish them or destroy them. The another part we will read from the book of Judges, chapter 16, verse 4 to 5. Once Samson went to Gaza, where he saw a harlot and visited her informed the, that Samson had come there. The men of Gaza surrounded him with an ambush at the seat gate all night long, and all that night they waited, saying, Tomorrow morning we will kill him. Samson rested there until midnight. Then he lost, seized the doors of the seat gate, and the two gate posts and tower them loose. Bar and all, he hosted them on his shoulders and carried them to the top of the ridge opposite Hebron. After that, he fell in love with a woman in the word Solek, whose name was Delilah. The lords of the Christian came to her and said, Be guide him and find out the secret of his great strength and how we may overcome and abide him so as to keep him helpless. We will each give you 1100 shekels of silver. The word of God. As we are aware that for Samson, it was prohibited for him to marry a Philistine girl. Again, once more, is marrying a Philistine known as Delilah, of which Delilah did not have a sure love towards him, but he was just looking for ways to know where the strength of Samson comes from. Let's continue and see what happened. From Judges chapter 16, verse 6, to 21. So the leader said to Samson, Tell me, 
the secret of your great strength and how you may be bound so as to be kept helpless. If they bind me with seven flesh bones clean, which he have not dread, Samson answered him, I shall be as weak as any other man. So the lords of the Philistines brought her seven flesh, both clean which had not dried, and she bound him with them. She had men lying in wait in the chamber, and so she said to him, The Philistine are upon you, Samson. But he snapped, and as clean as a sledden of two, is severed by a whiff of flame, and the secret of his strength remained unknown. The leader said to Samson, You have mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me how you may be bound if they bind me tight with new ropes, with which no work has been done. He answered her, I shall be as weak as any other man. So the leader took new ropes and bound him with them. Then she said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson, for there were men lying in waiting in the chamber. But he snapped them off his arms like sled. The leader said to Samson again, Up to now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me how you may be bound. He said to her, If you wave my seven locks of hair into the web, as fasten them with the pin, I shall be as weak as any other man. So while he slept, Delilah waved his seven locks of hair into the web and fastened them in with the pin. Then she said, The Christian are upon you, Samson. Awakening from his sleep, he pulled out both the weaver's pin and the web. Then she said to him, How can you say that you love me when you do not confident in me? Three times already you have mocked me and not told me the secret of your great strength. She importuned him continually and awakes him with her compliance till he was deathly well of them. So he took her completely into his confidence and told her, No leather has touched my head, for I have been consecrated to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaved, my strength will leave me and I shall be as weak as any other man. When Delilah saw that he had taken her completely into his confidence, she summoned the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come, up this time, for he has opened his heart to me. So the lords of Philistines came and brought up the money with them. She had him sleep on her lamp and called for a man who shaved off his seven locks of hair. Then she began to mistreat him, for his strength had left him, when she said, The Christians are upon you, Samson. And he woke from his sleep. He thought he could make good his escape as he had done time and again. For he did not realize that the Lord had left him, but the Christian seized him and gouged out his eyes. Then they brought him down together and bought him with blows, fitter, and he was put to glide in, in the prison. The word of God. As we have heard, Samson revealed the secret of his strength to Delilah, a hypocritical wife trying to show empty love to him. To repeat a little bit, he said, 
no razor has touched my head, for I have been consecrated to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaved, my strength will leave me, and I shall be as weak as any other man. With this, we can question ourselves, my dear listener. What does the name Samson mean? Unfortunately, it means sun. And as we can see, sun itself brings light. And we have heard that it was consecrated to God to bring light to the Israelites for the sake of their salvation. But again, let's see what is the meaning of the name Delilah. Delilah means darkness, of which once it came into the life of Samson, Samson, instead of leading the people, we can see what happened with him. We can come back and question ourselves, who is the Samson nowadays in our today's lives? Who is Delilah? in our today's life. Maybe we can try to think in our lives. Maybe I myself or else you as my dear listener, you are the Delilah or else Samson. But let me ask my fellow sister to try to share with us an example about Delilah and Samson. If we can see in our nowadays church, I will start with the question for you as a Christian. What do you usually prepare if you have opportunity to go to lead the readings on the Sundays or to sing a psalms? Because the majority they do take advantage. Some of you you wear mean skirt in front of the priest, but the priest they represent Samson because Samson was consecrated people. And the priests are they consecrated? but how we are going to prepare. We can see in our church, as a women, we can be like Delilah, looking for the priest, walking around their offices, asking question, which is the equatorical question, but the, our intention to make them off from their homilies. In the other hand, we can check men. A lot of men, they are trying to approach the sisters and they know really these sisters, they give their life to serve God. And that was the point of Samson. But now Samson is ending to be a blind person. And for you, dear listener, you can be a Delilah to the religious people to try to put the light into darkness. So it is important to check on your side, especially during Sundays. If you pass in front, look for your clothes, because I can see some of you go to the priest, pretending to be blessing the rosary, but the intention really is not the blessing. How you can approach the priest and say, Father, you may bless my rosary, but your chest is naked. Do you think Father is not a human being? It's a human being. But why we are trying to force them in order to fall like Samson? Samson was a consecrated person in order to flee the Israelite. But Delilah entered his life looking for the love, and that's why. He make him to fall. So we need to take care for the religious person. We need to pray for them and not to put them into temptation. About all what we have heard is that God gave Samson an extraordinary strength to defend his people. But he ended up forgetting his own mission and allowed himself to be deceived by the false wife who discovered the secret of his strength. The next point will come from Judges chapter 16, verse 22 to that one. But because of time, we are not going to read. I will just stress on verse 30. Once the Philistines were in the celebration, that is, was for their feast, they called for Samson to come out from the jail to come and amuse them. That is when... 
Some sort heard how they insulted Yahweh by saying, Their gods are greater than him, or they are stronger than him. He was so disturbed by those blasphemers. But what he has from the Lord is to return back his strength in order to be there to avenge them. But God himself helped him. So because the hair was still growing once more, he got enough strength once again. And so Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. This one, my dear listener, can bring a question to us with the strength the Lord has given hand to us. What for? Not only strength, but we have different capacities, gifts, and so forth in life. We use them for what? God is telling us that we have these things in order to serve others, not to misuse them to fulfill our own egoism. That is in our families, in our churches, that is also in the dire world wherever we do our jobs. My dear listener, have a nice time. Once more, my name is Sister Patricia, Missionary Servants of the Word. My name is Sister Nema. Have a nice day. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was, it was in, in the, the beginning, beginning, is now, and ever, ever shall be, world right without end. end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tune to Radio Walmini 88.3.